Yum, yum! Hello, and welcome to this Moto training video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at creating a sci-fi quarter, something like we see here in uh, in this render. And in this tutorial, we're not just going to be look at modeling a simple quarter, but what we're going to be doing is looking at creating a system that will allow you to model, adapt, and iterate your design so that you can quickly come to your finished design. Now, we're going to look at creating the simple setup, and then we'll move on to blocking in general dimensions and basic details. We'll move on after that to creating all of the individual pieces that can be blocked in using the existing geometry. We'll look then at adding details with replicators and base meshes from either the Moto stock content or from other content that you might have on hand. And then we'll also look at adding a little bit of extra dimension by creating things that aren't exactly tiled along the surface, like the conduits along the top here, which will be done with procedural modeling. So we've got a lot to cover. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do as we get started on this creation process is to uh, create sort of a backbone, a blocked out hierarchy using instances that will allow us to uh, build on single pieces of our mesh and it will update into everything within the entire corridor. So we're also going to build in a simple system that will allow us to easily swap in and out some interchangeable pieces and allow us to speed up our visualization uh, and our iterative design process. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a basic uh, mesh piece and then we're going to create some individual pieces that will layer on top of that uh, in order to give us the scale uh, that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just a basic piece of floor. So uh, let's go and grab the cube tool here and just to make this uh, go a little bit more quickly at the beginning I'm going to turn on my snapping and then press F11 and I'm going to turn on, I'm going to make sure that I just have grid snap turned on and everything else turned off. And this is just going to allow me to get nice uniform scale pieces out very quickly. All right, so let's go ahead and click over here. And what I'm looking at making here to start is going to be um, a a, a grid space that's going to be four meters across and uh, four meters deep. So a four meter by four meter piece. Now I can go and take and adjust the length and the depth as I need, but uh, that's going to give us a good jumping off point. So right now I can see that my grid spacing, that's going to be these small grid uh, points, is set to 200 millimeters. So that means that the larger grid, which is 10 of the smaller ones, is going to be two meters across. So if I click and drag this down, see I've got two meters by two meters, which isn't quite what we need. So let's go ahead and zoom zoom out and I'm going to make this now four meters in length and what I want to do is I want to straddle the uh, the center line here so instead of dragging out farther this way I'm gonna grab this side and pull that out there so now we've got there we go four meters by four meters so I'm looking at these are half meter grids now so I've got two meters on either side of the center and then extending from the center line down uh, I'm going to have four meters in this direction now obviously this is this is just the scale that I'm using you can go with any scale that you want but the reason that I'm going from the center away you could also go from the center upwards and it won't really matter um, but the reason I'm starting from the center is moving is so that I have a pivot point uh, right here at one end of my pieces and it's gonna make it a a little bit easier to connect them uh, later on instead of having to draw from uh, the center every time. All right, so let's add a little bit of depth to this. So let's make it maybe 50 millimeters deep should be totally fine. And I know that I'm going to have some floor resting on top of this, so I'm actually going to pull this down just a little bit more. So it's still going to be 50 millimeters deep, um, but it's going to be uh, sitting underneath the ground plane, or rather, excuse me, 100 millimeters, because this is a 100 millimeter grid. Um, so a few inches thick there, and then it's sitting a few inches below uh, what's going to end up being my floor, which is the area right on top. Okay, so that's that. That's going to be our, our basic starting off point here. So let's zoom out to where I can see that pretty easily. Uh, and now I'm going to press N to create a new mesh layer. And I'm going to grab another cube. And this is going to be kind of half of my floor. So I'm going to do the same basic thing here where I'm going to go into this view. And I'm just going to uh, create that right there. And notice now from this point on, I'm going to be working just on one side of the grid. And that way I can use some mirrored symmetry uh, in order to create the other half and I don't have to be working um, on both sides at the same time. Okay, so that's our floor piece. Let's press N again and I'm going to create just a basic column here and I'm actually going to let this overlap the floor a little way so I'm going to leave it down here. Let's start right about there. So it's going to be overlapping everything. That way um, I don't have anything with uh, any geometry floating in space. And then let's pull this up and I'm going to make this whole thing about 
three meters high. Actually, let's go up one more there, so that ought to do it. Okay, great. So now we're going one, two, and three meters above the floor. And let's give it just actually a little bit more, so let's pull it up um, just another 200 millimeters above. So now we're pretty much symmetrically above the floor and where the, uh, the ceiling will be. Okay, so once again, new mesh layer, and this is going to be our wall. All right, so we're going to do the same kind of thing that we did with the uh, with the pillar, but this time we're going to give it uh, more depth here because this is going to run the whole length of the corridor. And notice I'm not any adding any subdivisions or anything like that. I'm just making a very uh, basic kind of layout at this point. All right, so once again, N for a new mesh layer. And let's go ahead and make the ceiling, which is going to overlap about like that. And again, let's just use our grid here in the top view to snap this along until we fill out the space. Now, I may want to have some kind of extra details, another layer of, you know, adding in some paneling, adding in, um, you know, smaller details I want to keep separated from the pillars, the wall, the floors, things like that. So I'm going to create just one empty mesh layer, and I'm going to go ahead and start naming things now. So I'm going to call this details. All right. And this one here is the ceiling. And this one is the wall. This one here is the pillar or the column. This one is, I believe, the floor. Yep, the floor. And this one here is the base. All right. So now what I'm going to do is take all of these individual pieces, except for the base, I'm going to select them and drag and drop them into the base. So now I have kind of one, one whole piece here, and all of these are inside of it. Now I'm going to go one extra layer here, and oops, let's add an R on so we actually have the floor instead of the flue. Uh, and I'm going to take all of these pieces for now and just parent them to the floor. Okay, and this is going to give us one solid piece then that we can mirror. So now let's go ahead, and I'm going to make sure that I am in item mode because I want to be duplicating items here. Then I'm going to go to the duplicate tab, the mirror tool, but what I'm going to do is hold down the alt key or the option key on a Mac and that's going to turn this into an instance mirror. And that's going to be important here because we don't want to be constantly having to go and update all of our other pieces as we go along. We want to use instances for this. So let's go ahead and hold alt and click on instance mirror. And now um, I want to make sure I'm uh, mirroring across the x-axis. I want to make sure that I'm including the hierarchy, so all of the things underneath. And let's go ahead and click Apply. And there you go. All right, so now we have our, uh, we have our basic piece of geometry. All right, so that's, that's a start, but let's continue on here and see how we can actually uh, continue this same idea in order to, uh, to make something that's going to give us more, uh, more of a, a solid feel for a corridor instead of just a piece of a corridor. And as we work on one modular asset, then we'll be able to see uh, how it will work within the, uh, the idea of a full seat. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Duplicate again, and we're going to just choose uh, the Clone tool. Again, hold Alt or option, and that's going to turn it to the instance clone. And then I'm going to click here in the top viewport and drag this out so it's going to uh, four meters. You can see now we've got uh, the creation of four additional corridor pieces, right, running down uh, the length here. And that's that might be long enough, but just, you know, so we can go a little further here. I'm going to move this up to nine instances there. So now we've got a fairly long hallway um, and that's going to give us the idea of what we're working with right away. So that's that's going to be the basic setup here that we have. And now from this we can take and start modeling. But as we model just on this single set of geometry, so this pillar, this wall, this floor, and this roof, and then also this base to a certain extent, um, we can go and start creating a much more complex thing. So uh, just so you get the idea here before we move on, I'm going to go ahead and take just the uh, this pillar, right? And I'm going to go ahead and loop slice. And let's turn off our snapping. I'm going to set the count to 2 in the mode to symmetry. And so let's take and drag this out a little ways. So it gets fairly close to the ceiling and floor, but not too close. Maybe something like that. Uh, and now, if I take, for example, just this piece right here, uh, I'm just getting the front and side faces. I'm going to go ahead and bevel, 
make sure that I have all of my offsets set to zero. And I want to make sure that I have group polygons turned on, so it's going to keep those as one continuous piece. So I'm just going to bevel this inwards a little bit, shift, and then click off of the uh, handles, and then bevel inwards a little bit more. So I've added just a little bit of a contour to that pillar. And you can already see that that is now propagating on throughout the rest of the uh, the rest of the scene. All right, so now we're ready to actually sit down and start doing some real modeling. We can start uh, creating a more detailed scene, and everything is going to update as we go. All right, so once you have the overall structure uh, designed and laid out, you can start looking at kind of blocking out more of the overall details of the form itself. And so uh, for this part, we're actually going to look and see how we want um, just the, the broad stroke shape of the corridor. And then we're also going to look at where we would want to add in more uh, fine-tuned details, so some smaller things uh, that we can attach that will just add a little bit more uh, depth and, uh, and interest to the walls and uh, the panels and the floor, perhaps. Uh, as well as looking at some lighting. Uh, so a big part of this is actually going to be how we're going to light this scene. So if we don't take into account any lighting at the beginning, it's going to change the way that we actually work on this. So uh, let's go ahead here and I've got a figure in here so we can see for scale. Um, so with this average size character, you can see that height-wise everything looks pretty good. Even if I were to have some hanging down lights or some cords or cables uh, or ducts or conduits, things hanging down a little bit, that's still not going to give us any problem with headroom. However, it starts to look a little bit on the uh, the narrow side, and I want this to feel as if it's a nice, you know, broad, open corridor. Obviously, if you want to do that differently, then you could make that change. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to be looking at it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen the entire thing just a little bit in order to uh, give us a little bit better look here. So inside of my base is where I've got everything, um, all the individual pieces, including the mirrored stuff. So I'm just going to double click on the base layer and that will select all of the layers that are inside of that. And then I'm going to go over to my vertex mode and I'm going to turn on symmetry because what I want to do is just grab all of the vertices that are to the right of center. And then I'm just going to use the move tool to just slide these over. And I'm going to go out about maybe another half a meter. And now you can see this looks a lot more broad. So even if I had two people walking down the corridor, um, I would have plenty of room for somebody, say, working on a, a computer panel on the wall or somebody up here fixing something. There still is going to be plenty of room to move around. All right, so that's going to work pretty well. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of contour because the shape here is getting a little bit boxy and boring. So what I want to do is kind of arc out um, the walls on the sides. And I also kind of want the uh, these pillars to go with it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a couple of uh, different things uh, in order to make this work. So I want to put a couple of slices uh, down the middle here. And if I look in the front, you can see where I kind of want to put some slices here so I can grab the middle section and slide it out. But the problem that I'm going to have right now is um, if I slide this out and I just slide from the center out, here, let's go ahead and add the slices first. So uh, Shift C gives me my slice tool here. And let's just go ahead and I'm going to turn my snapping back on. Let's press F11 and make sure we've got grid snap on, which we do. Uh, and I'm just going to click and drag through here and then hold the shift key and do the same thing kind of on the bottom half here. All right, so that's made these two kind of cuts. Oops, looks like I went about one grid space too low. So there we go. So there's uh, these two spaces here. But if I take these vertices right here, for example, and slide them out, you'll see what happens is we get a bit of an error here. Now, this may or may not be an issue. Now, um, you may want to have, uh, you know, maybe the wall here arc outwards, and perhaps you would just want to grab this pillar and pull it out separately. Uh, so you could do that. But I also want to show you uh, a really quick way that you can align some edges to something that's existing. So let's go ahead and undo that. And I'm just going to put a couple of loop slices um, in here, and it doesn't really matter where they are because I'm going to align them here in a second anyway. Uh, and then I just have to select those loops, turn on my scale tool, and let's make sure that we have negative scale turned off, and let's turn off symmetry now because we're done there, and turn off snapping. And I'm going to set my action center to element. And what I want to do is I want to align to this edge right here um, that's kind of the, the top and the bottom also parts of the pillar. So I'm just going to click on that. And you can see that my tool handle is aligned to that. And then I can just slap that down, and it becomes completely flat. So again, I'll double click on that to select it. Again, go to my scale tool, click on this edge down here, and the same thing. And now I've got some completely aligned edges so that if I go in here, let's just go with these vertices. If I just grab these, set our action center back to normal, and let's pull these out, say, I don't want to go too far, but about 300 millimeters. There you go. Now you can see that everything is uh, properly aligned. 
Okay, so continue on here. I actually do want to take and extend uh, this entire uh, piece further out because I don't want uh, to have any uh, instances where maybe there's a little bit of a gap here. I want this to overlap a bit, uh, but I did want this contour to match up. So uh, the next thing that I do is press the O key and go down to inactive meshes and change this to uh, make inactive mesh invisible. Uh, so that's just going to give me just the uh, the mesh that I've got here, right? So now what I'm going to do is I really don't need the polygons on top or bottom um, or any of these on the back because this is all going to overlap. So let's go ahead and just cut those out, all right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the back ones. Let's just deselect the ones on there. And I'm going to use Edge Extend, which is the Z key, and then just click and drag this out. And this is just going to give me a little bit more space. Let's go out maybe, I don't know, 500 millimeters, something like that, uh, so that I know I have a nice overlap there. Then I can go ahead and press the O key again, and Inactive Meshes, I'm going to uncheck, make Inactive Invisible, and then everything else will show up again. So um, what I want to do here is I want to have a little bit of a, a contour shift, where everything is fairly angular at this point, um, and I want to have some rounded uh, pieces in here. And I think these pillars are going to present a nice place where I can have something rounded. But I want to be able to quickly shift what I'm working with, and you know, if I decide to make it not round in a version, I want to be able to have that option there relatively quickly. So what I'm going to do is select everything in this mesh layer, copy, and then I'm going to take and just drag all of this stuff up, and I'm going to go up, you know, maybe four meters. That gets it plenty out of the way, but now I always have that there that I can drop back down if I want to, and now I'm just going to paste back in what I had copied. Now you can see I have an alternate version, all right? So if I double click on this and press shift tab, um, that's going to subdivide it. So now we can start working with some subdivision surfaces and make something you know, a little bit more interesting here. All right, so um, also looking at this, I think I've decided that these pillars are a bit too narrow. So what I'm gonna do in the top view here is just go and grab all of the vertices on one side and drag them over. 500 millimeters, and this is going to serve two purposes actually. This is going to um, help us to give these pillars a little bit more width, and then also it's going to cause that the pillars are going to overlap the seams so that we don't get that constant solid repetition. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of work here on the subdivision surfaces. So um, in order to get semi-rounded or semi-sharp corners, um, you'll need to deal with uh, subdivision levels that are higher than the default. So let's go down here to the surface and we'll see that the we're dealing with Capmel clark subdivision surfaces uh, because I pressed shift tab. And the subdivision level is two and the render level is two. That's gonna be a little bit low. So I'm gonna turn this up to, let's go all the way to five. Um, and at five, this is going to give us a fairly nice amount um, of, of room in leeway in how we sharpen things. So let's go ahead and just so you can see this in action, I'm going to double click on this edge here, press Shift W to turn on my vertex weight map tool, um, or vertex map weight tool rather. And right now I have my weight set to 40%. And at 40%, when our subdivision level is five, it's going to give us a fairly sharp crease without being uh, completely sharp. So if I deselect, you can see we still have a, a nice subtle bit of rounding there. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in in a few places here. So let's do this around kind of the inside face of this pillar. And Shift W. And since I already have that set, I can just press Shift W and then uh, click and we'll be good to go. And let's see, perhaps I want to add this also back here, um, except I don't want the front face of the pillar rounded. So I'm going to control click and deselect uh, the whole front face. Again, Shift W and click. And you see that's going to cause that crease up there in the corner, with which I think looks a lot better. Um, all right, so let's do something like that. And then the last thing I'm going to do on this pillar here is I'm going to add in a loop slice right down the middle. And then what, what I'm going to do with this loop slice is I'm just going to drag it forward a little bit, this extra loop. And this is going to help me get a little bit more of a rounded face on this version of, um, of my pillar. Okay, so I think something like that is probably going to be pretty good. And the cool thing is this is very easy to uh, just make iterative adjustments to. So let's say I want to take, you know, this part of the pillar here and I'm going to copy it. Let's hide it. And I'm going to add as if it's something that is like a glass casing over this. So let's just select this and I'm going to push this outwards and then thicken it. So let's go to deform and I'm going to choose push. And let's just push out a little bit. I think 20, 15, 20 millimeters should be good. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and just thicken that. And let's go out maybe 30 millimeters, about an inch thick should be great. Uh, and now I can press U to unhide that part that I had copied. And now all we have to do is add in, again, a little bit more sharpening. So let's go to our edge mode. I'm going to select this edge here, this edge up top that's kind of hiding at the moment. There it is. And then the same ones at the bottom. So here. And perhaps it's going to be easier to see in this side view. And got to wheel around inside here to see this. And there we go. Okay, so now, and I'll have to go do this on the other side as well, but I'll just show you here. I can press Shift W and click, and there you can see now the glass, or what's going to be the glass, is just uh, meeting back flush up against there. So I'll go ahead and make the adjustments on the other side, and we'll pause just for a second, and then we'll come back and make one more iteration of this so we can see how we can uh, really easily change out our designs uh, without having to do a lot of work. All right, so that's all sharpened up now, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this and this, I'm going to double click on both of those just to make sure I have them selected. And I'm just like I did before, I'm going to copy here. And then I can use the move tool and let's slide it down here. And again, I'm just going to use four meters. Now, if I had a taller ceiling, I might want to go with five meters. Uh, but, you know, just a, a general idea. I want to slide these out of the way. And then I'm going to paste those in there. And, you know, so now let's say I wanted to have a version where perhaps, um, you know, this isn't so uh, so flat here and I want a little bit of contour so I'm just gonna uh, click and drag over this section here make sure I don't have that polygon there selected I'm just gonna slide it uh, back this way on this version okay so now I've got the nice arced version and the cool thing about this is um, this is a good place where you can very easily break symmetry uh, so what I'm gonna do is let's drag that back like that and now I'm going to let's go ahead and select um, you know, both of these pieces here and I'm going to press M to assign a material and I've got a glass material already in here so let's go ahead and press OK and it's going to be a, a, a transparent uh, piece uh, it's a little bit tinted so kind of fogged glass and then I'm going to hide that and let's say on this arced in version here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, version a light so let's press M and I actually already have a light material as well so let's just go ahead and call this light click OK and uh, and then we should be good to go and we'll go ahead and set up lights here in just a second uh, but let's go ahead and press U to unhide our glass pieces and let's say that uh, here let's go ahead and take this entire mesh and let's say I want to just drag this up and you can see dragging this up on this side doesn't affect the other side because I'm dragging now in item mode. Um, so let's say that I wanted, um, let's do this in polygon mode and you can actually see the difference here. So if I'm in polygon mode and I drag up, you can see everything moves and we keep our symmetry. So let's drag up four meters here because I want to have um, on this side, I would like to see the, uh, the concave version. So let's go ahead and just in item mode, drag this one down and we'll drag it down four meters so that everything lines up nicely and then we have this alternate uh, piece in there okay uh, and now you could also do this the nice thing about this is um, anytime you you uh, you're working on an item level you can go ahead and pretty easily break symmetry so you know if I wanted to grab a few of these and just move them upwards four meters see I can make that change here and it's not going to affect everything else but that way I could really easily go in and swap in and out different pieces and right now I only have three different um, three different versions. I've got the very basic version, uh, the flat version, the concave version, but I could very easily change that around so that uh, I, I could have more detail. And I could also do that with uh, what we're going to add next, which is going to be detail on the walls and floors, um, different cabling, conduits and housings and things like that. Uh, but before we move on to actually adding in those fine details, let's uh, take just a moment here to add in the spaces where those details are going to go. So there are three places that I'm going to add in more details. And it's going to be on the ceiling. I'm going to add in some lights and 
and some conduits where I'm going to have some wiring or cabling or ducting. Um, on the side panels here where I'm going to have uh, some things that look like some hatches or doors or panels that might uh, have storage and then also some maybe some buttons. And then on the floor I'm going to add in some panels and some glass just to uh, break up the surface and make it a little bit more interesting. So let's start up here with the ceiling which is going to be fairly simple. Um, I'm just going to select all these pieces here. Um, Alt C to go to my loop slice tool and let's give it uh, maybe a count of two and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, cause that the center section just goes up a little bit and then I want to taper downwards and I'm going to put my lighting in here around where it's tapering and I'm going to put any ducting or conduits down the center section that's raised up. So let's go ahead now that I've got that uh, and I can just select all of these polygons and pull those up. So maybe something like that. Uh, that might be a little bit on the, uh, the deep side for that angle. So let's pull this in a little too. All right, I think something like that works. And then what I'm going to do is add in uh, what's basically just going to start here is a floating cube. Uh, but this is going to provide our lighting. So this is going to be an overhead light. Uh, I'm going to make this about that big maybe and I want to make sure I'm leaving plenty of headroom and this looks totally fine uh, so that's probably gonna work uh, let's go ahead and make this two meters in the Z and I'm gonna put it two meters down um, in the position that way it's gonna center up in the space okay so now I'm gonna take this whole thing and I want this light to kinda angle up just a little bit so we're mostly gonna get uh, indirect light kinda bouncing off of the ceiling I think it's gonna work a little bit better than just doing um, you know direct light straight down on the characters uh, so let's go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna go to uh, edges and what I want to do is hold down the alt key or the option key if you're on a Mac and it's going to convert my selection into edges. Now I can just use the edge bevel to click and drag and add a little bit more contour here. So again I'm just going to select this polygon in here and I'm just going to create a little inset where I'm going to have my material for my light and there we go. So real quickly before I even continue on here let's go ahead and take this light material and I'm going to go to the material properties and first I'm going to change it to a traditional uh, material so this isn't going to have any energy conservation or anything uh, fancy like that so it's going to calculate a bit quicker and then I'm going to go down to the luminous intensity and set it up to three and there we go so now we've got that and if we look here we should see if I hide let's see it's going to be on this side if I hide this We'll see that we have our, our illumination under there as well, uh, but we've got to very quickly go in and set up our glass. So glass, same kind of thing. Um, I'm going to go with physically based for the glass. Uh, no diffuse, 4% uh, specular, 100% Fresnel. Roughness I'm going to turn down to zero so it's nice and shiny. Uh, and then for the material uh, transparency, let's set it to 80% with a zinc crown glass dispersion and let's just drag this back a little bit for the transparent color to tint it a little bit and there you go so now I'll have some lighting coming in there all right so moving on one last little bit here uh, we're going to do the walls in the floor so let's start just by breaking up the panels for the walls here and what I'm looking for is just a, a simple space uh, that's going to exist on either side of the pillars where I can basically just place stuff and I'm going to start just by putting in some real simple uh, bevels here so let's just go ahead and select these two polygons and I'm just going to bevel inwards let's go maybe a hundred millimeters and that ought to do it for that so what I'm going to do here is copy this and let's hide what's there so that when I paste this in I can actually see it and now I'm going to scale these in um, but I want to scale them relative to their own position. So I'm going to change my action center to local. And now let's just go ahead and drag these in. You'll see that they get smaller in their space. And let's press U to unhide the other pieces. I'm going to bevel these and just pull them out a little ways. Uh, maybe I'll have these stick out just a little bit farther than I had inset. I inset 100 millimeters. Let's come out 120. Uh, so we get a little bit of uh, kind of depth change there. And then let's go ahead and shift up arrow and I'm going to select um, my edges. Now one thing to note here is I've got these extra edges selected now with that conversion and I don't need those so let's go instead and I'm just going to select these polygons then I'm going to get the boundary and then I'm just going to select these corner ones. I don't want to add any extra edges back there uh, where I don't need them so I'm just going to select these edges here 
something like that. And let's go ahead and bevel them. And see, I want to get my depth right first, and then we'll go ahead and uh, set in the rounding. So something like that. Set my round level up. Not super high, but high enough that we can see it well. I think that works pretty darn well. Now the last thing that I'm going to do with these is they're protruding from the wall, uh, but they're flush just right at the wall on the back. So I can use the move tool to just sink these back in just a little tiny bit here. So I'm thinking like five, four or five millimeters ought to do it. Uh, that way I, I get an overlap there. Uh, and I think this works on the top maybe, but on the bottom I'd kind of like a little bit more panels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide everything else. So shift H. Um, and now what I want to do is use this exact geometry to really quickly make uh, three separate pieces that all exist in the same space. So I'm going to start by selecting all of this, double click, and copying it. All right, and then I'm going to grab all of the vertices on this side, and let's set our uh, our selection back to automatic for our um, action center. And I'm going to move this side in, and let's go in maybe. 600 millimeters. I'm going to do the same thing on the other. So let's go in 600 millimeters. All right, and so now what I can do is if I just paste in um, what I had already made, I can just deselect the vertices on one side and then drag these over. And I want this to get close but not overlapping at all. So let's go to. I'm going to go 1.61 meters, okay? And now if I paste again, you see I still have those vertices selected. So again, I can hold control, right click now around the bottom to deselect, and I'll move these down the same amount. So 1.61 meters. And there you go. You can see that now these fit into the exact same space, um, but they are three individual pieces now. So U to unhide, and now we're set. So I've got I've got this piece here, I've got some space here where I can put some stuff in, and the last thing that I'm going to do is create a little bit of space on the floor. All right, now the floor, I want to have um, a couple of panels on either side. Uh, so I make these about one and a half meter panels with a little space in between. And then I also want to have uh, some space in the middle where I can have some glass uh, to kind of break over the, sy the symmetry. So, um, so it kind of goes from side to side. So let's go ahead and do that here real quickly. So let's go ahead and add in a loop slice here. And I know that this whole thing is currently uh, two and a half meters wide. So if I put this, um, my loop slice is set to symmetry and a count of two. If I set to 20%, that's going to give me half a meter here, half a meter here, and then a meter and a half here. Um, so that's going to make my life a little easier. I don't have to futz around with that. Um, and now that I know that this is the right width, I can just take and slide it on over to something like that. Get it a little bit closer to center. Okay, I think that's going to work. And uh, now the last thing that I have to do here is I want to create a gap. Um, I want to have a half a meter and then a then a meter and a half and then half a meter and then a meter and a half of space. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to cut some pieces out. But I want to make sure that I'm not um, I'm not causing myself other problems here. So I'm going to press the O key and let's make everything else invisible for the moment. And I'm going to go here in this top view, where now I'm looking at a half meter grid. Let's do Shift C. I'm going to turn my snapping on, and I'm just going to drag this across here. And then I'm going to go down one, two, three spaces, hold Shift and drag across again, hold Shift and drag across again. So now I have a half a meter space, a one and a half meter space, a half meter space, and a one and a half meter space. All right, so we're getting close here. Um, now the last thing that we'll need to do here is um, take these pieces out, right? But at the same time, I don't want any floating polygons or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is select this end piece as well and just control X to cut those out. So you see, I don't have any, uh, any one-sided polygon there. And then for this side, it's fairly easy. I just select the top and the bottom, double clicks, and I can bridge. So let's go ahead and click and bridge. Now for this side, it's a slightly bit more complicated, but all you have to do is decide where you want to bridge from. You know, in this case, we want to go from top to bottom, and then I'll deselect um, these side pieces here. And so now we have a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom, even though they're not complete loops, uh, that's still going to allow me to bridge across the space. So click, and now we're set. So again, we'll press O, we'll turn off the inactive mesh, and there we go. So now I've got all my space to go in and add some extra details, a little bit more functionality, and we will go on from there.
So before we move on, I'm going to let it sit here and uh, in, and render a bit so that we can actually see kind of what this is going to look like. And then we'll move on, add in our details to create our finished corridor. All right, so before we finish up here, here's a quick uh, preview rendering of just kind of where we are so we can see the general layout, we can get an idea for the lighting, and obviously this is real preliminary, uh, just kind of getting a, a feel for the space as we go along. Uh, but so you can see what I've got going on here. Let's go up to the Render tab, and in Global Illumination, I have my indirect bounces set to four because all of my illumination is coming from these overhead panels and these columns. Um, I've set my irradiance rays up to 512, uh, the default's 256, just to give it a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more clarity. And I've increased my irradiance rate uh, to 5 from 2.5. That's going to give us a faster but slightly less accurate result, which for a preview is going to be totally fine. Uh, and then I've also increased my interpolation values from 1 to 8. And that's just going to cause that some of this little bit of undulation is going to be uh, muted a bit so that we can get a little bit uh, better idea without having to spend a lot more time uh, waiting for a much uh, more accurate render. All right, so from here we can get the idea that I think this is going to work overall pretty well as far as lighting. Uh, one thing that I may want to do would be to take and put an alternate light material on the overhead lights and boost its intensity a bit, maybe double it so I get a little bit more light uh, bouncing down without having to really increase uh, the brightness of these pillars because I don't want these to be overly bright. Um, or I could alternately add in a light material on the pillars on the right. So um, in a finished version, I would add some variation to these so that they're not all an exact 100% uniform value, but you can kind of get the general idea here. All right, so the, the next thing that we'll do as we're uh, moving on here is uh, adding in some pre-modeled details uh, to be able to flesh this out uh, more quickly. And I'm going to start here on these walls by adding on some paneling. Okay, so let's go over to the Layout tab. And here in the Layout tab, uh, there are a couple of places that you can find some uh, some good things to work with. So uh, the first place that you might want to look, and this is just in the um, pre-built uh, uh, stock content that ships right with Moto, is going to be down in the Vehicles section of the Meshes tab, and then under Spacecraft. And here you can see you've got a bunch of different parts and pieces. Now most of these are going to come in pretty big, um, but you could use them as a starting point, scale them down, and work with them. So I'm going to put in a couple of pieces here uh, just so that we get the general idea. So let's drop in space panel 03, uh, space panel 01, and maybe something with a little bit more of a deep profile, not too deep, maybe here this space random 01. Okay, so now with those there, um, they're not going to be replicated into my entire scene until I uh, basically copy and paste the polygons into um, one of our existing layers here that actually has stuff. So I'm going to use the details um, little section here for that. Uh, so first we can take and place them and then we can actually get them to uh, to propagate throughout the scene. So uh, let's start here with uh, this one and at this point I'm going to be working in item mode but once I copy and paste these things I will be in uh, in polygon mode. So let's take and rotate this guy uh, and what I want to do is see it rotated so it's up against the wall like that. Uh, let's move it kind of over into place here, and actually I can turn my snapping off. Uh, and then let's go ahead and scale this guy down so that it seems a little bit more like a panel and less like um, an, an entire wall. Uh, Alright, so let's go and take that, pull it forward, slide it over, and I think that even this is going to be uh, pretty big because I want to have more than one piece on here, and I think this is a little large. So let's go ahead and scale this down, Oops, scale it down even more. So something like, maybe like that, and then I'm going to move it up and over. And the problem that I've got with this one, you can see, is that uh, it comes away and it gives you this weird kind of um, strange opening. So what I'm going to do is, in edge mode, I'm just going to select this entire edge here, and then I'm going to use, and actually, let's see, the way that's sitting up, I can actually just grab it and I'm going to pull it straight backwards so that it sinks into the wall. And really that's all I need to do for that one. I think that's that's going to work out fine. Um, we're just looking at adding a little bit of depth here. Um, now I could add some stuff in here in this little space, but most of this space over here on the right is going to be overlapped by this pillar, so I'm not going to worry about putting in everything there. I'm going to keep everything kind of inside of this space here. All right, so let's go to the, uh, the other panel that we've got here. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing, where this one I'm going to take and... Make sure that I'm in item mode. So let's take this guy and rotate it up this way. 
and then in my side view here, I'm going to place it up against the wall, and then I'm going to scale it down. I want to leave it uh, this one vertical like this. So let's go ahead and scale this guy down. Something like that ought to be good. And then we've just got to slide it back over so it's up against the wall. And in this case, I want to keep it popping out, though it would be an option to sink it in far enough that the, the main panel is, uh, is actually hidden. Uh, but I'm going to leave it popping out here. Maybe that's a little bit too big, um, but actually I want it to be a little bit thicker. So let's, I'm going to just scale this in different dimensions here. And let's just pull this out a little bit. So something like that ought to be good. All right, so there's that piece. And then let's go ahead and get this one last one that we've got here. And this one we can do fairly quickly because it's not really too large. It's fairly small. Uh, so let's move this over into place. I'm just going to line it up underneath our first panel that we placed. And actually, what I think I'm going to do with this one is create two of them. So let's go ahead and place this one here. And I want it kind of sunk into the wall just a little bit, maybe right about like that. And then what I'm going to do is in polygon mode, I'm just going to right click around and select all the polys, uh, copy, paste, rotate, and I'll hold down the control key to just uh, lock this in increments of 15 degrees. And that way I can just drag it down right there. And then if I wanted, maybe I'd put a little light panel or something in there, but I'm going to leave that as is right now. Just looking at showing you the general idea here, you can see we can pretty quickly pop that kind of thing in. And now that I've got that done, I'm going to select all three mesh layers, make sure I'm still in polygon mode, copy, and I'm going to hide them. And then I'm going to go into my details uh, layer, which is actually empty at the moment, and then just paste those in. You can see that poop. Poof, they go right on down along the walls, and we are set and ready to go. So the last place that I want to put in um, details like this is going to be here along the floor. But I don't want to see such perfect repetition. You know, maybe this is going to be one panel, a second panel, a third panel, and a fourth panel, and then that same pattern continue all the way on. So I'm going to use replicators to do this. Um, and what I'm going to do, and actually I want to use um, a completely blank layer to do this. This is going to exist outside of my hierarchy. That way I can have some good control over it. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab this edge right here and this edge, and I'm going to bridge these two together to get a polygon, uh, and then I'm going to copy and paste that polygon into a new layer. So let's go here and choose Bridge and click, and now I'm going to select this one, Control x to cut it out. And let's go outside of my hierarchy here and to create a new mesh layer and paste. And then I'm just going to take this guy and pull it down uh, just a little bit. I can always adjust this later, but let's go down maybe that far. Uh, and now what I want to do is I want to just duplicate this so it goes all the way down the length of the floor here. And then I also want to mirror it over. So let's start with using a clone. Actually, let's use an array uh, that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. So I'm going to set this over just far enough so that it fits in here. Now this may be a little bit off, so I might want to end up actually mirroring this in the end anyway, but I can see how close we get here. Um, and then I'm going to pull this down, and we should be looking at about a 2 meter change in that direction. Okay, looks good. So now I'm just going to increase the Z count, three, four. And what I'm going to do here is just go into my top view and we're just going to increase this until it gets all the way down to the end of the hallway. All right, and there we go. So now I've got this mesh layer, which I'm going to call replicator panels just so we know what the replicator is going to draw from. And I can actually hide that also at this point. Uh, and now we need to go and actually create some, uh, some panels that are going to go in there. So I'm going to go here into my Layout tab, and I'm going to just back all the way out here. Oops. And I have some uh, extra stuff that's in here under a folder called Nernies, uh, and I have a series of two by two panels. Now, if you want to put these into your own content folder, that's super easy. All you have to do is go up to your uh, system and choose Open Content Folder, and that will bring up your content folder. And you can go into Assets, 
and then meshes and then you can create a folder here I've created one that's called nernies and then here I've got this two by two panels and I've got another folder here which you'll be able to get along with these scene files all you have to do is take these and drag and drop them into that folder and then when you navigate to here inside of your uh, your preset browser you'll have all these pieces so there are four different ones that are lights and then there are a dozen that are just different various types of uh, floor panels so let's scale these up so you can see them a little bit better so you can see here's just a very plain one this one has a little um, kind of a separation down the middle this one has a hatch with a little piece of glass uh, this one has a rounded section so you get the idea here so I'm gonna take um, a few of these so let's go ahead and just put in one two three four five six and then they start to get a little bit more contour and I don't want them uh, to be too deep so let's just put those six in now you can see they're set right now to be two meters by two meters and my spaces are a meter and a half by a meter and a half um, so I could do that scaling later but just to make my life easier I'm gonna do that here first so I'm gonna select all of these uh, mesh items so simple one through six scale tool and I'm gonna leave them their current height because I like the height that they're at and then I'm just gonna put these down to 75% in the X and the Z okay and now all I have to do is create a group out of these put in a replicator and they'll fill out the floor so let's go into groups new group call this panels and then I'll go ahead and click OK so now I have this group there and let's go back over here and I'm just gonna hide these so that they're out of the way and now we'll go ahead and add in a replicator so let's do add item particles replicator and for my prototype I'm going to choose it's gonna be way down in the bottom here I'm going to choose my panels you can see the the groups will have a little bracket around them so I'm looking for the group there with my panels and then for my point source I'm going to choose replicator panels that's my uh, layer that has the replicators in there now right now it's putting one on each vertex so in all four corners that's not what I want I want these to center up in the middle of those panels so I'm gonna change my source mode to use polygons and now you can see I get a nice uh, a nice little replicator popping up in each of those spaces so if I want to see that I can press the O key go to drawing and control and under replicators I want to change this to all and now you can see I've got all of my panels in there. Now there's one last thing that I'd like to do with this. Uh, let's go down to the replicators here and I want to click down in my extra options and right now it's off screen so you won't be able to see it but there is an option and actually here I can get this in here if I close this up there's an option right here that says random 90 degree Y rotations and that's just gonna allow each one to have a different facing uh, direction but they're gonna stay oriented flat along the ground and they're only gonna orient in uh, 90 degree uh, rotations but that way it will look a little bit more interesting they won't be all exactly the same now if you don't like exactly the placement you can always select the replicator and go to the seed here and just click and change it until you see uh, kind of one that you like now, let's see I kind of like this one with this uh, this is a glass panel with some lighting underneath it so I'm gonna leave that there um, all right uh, so that that's getting close here um, I think the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little conduit up at the top where we're gonna uh, put some cables down along the whole length of this and then we'll be able to have a look at a uh, finished render of our modeling thus far all right so let's go over to the model tab and I'm actually gonna use some procedural modeling for this just to uh, make my life a little bit easier here so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a space for the um, for the housing so let's go to our our roof layer here our ceiling layer and I'm gonna to go to basic and let's just get a cube which I'm gonna just drop in right up here and what I'm gonna make is kind of an eye beam that's just gonna give me a little space to put some conduits um, let's do something like that and oops right now it's way down there and I need to move it down here where it should be So let's place this from right there all the way down to right there and I want to make sure basically that I have my Z set to four meters and my uh, Z position set to two meters and that's going to keep it uh, nice and centered up okay and now in polygon mode I'm gonna loop slice a couple of pieces along there and I'm gonna select this and this bevel and I'm gonna drag these out and I'm gonna do the same thing on the outside but I'm not gonna make it quite as deep which is why I did these separately so just pull those out a little bit as well Maybe something like that and then that's actually making it so that I have a little bit more headroom for my uh, 
for my lights. So I'm going to make my lights a little bit bigger here. Let's just go ahead and select the entire light mesh. Uh, and I'm going to move it to like right here. And I'll select all of the vertices on the bottom. W for the move tool and I'll change my action center to element so I can just select this bottom polygon. And I'll just pull this down. And if I pull this down a little ways here, uh, you know, I'm nearly doubling the space of the light. That's actually going to double the light output. So it's, uh, I think that's going to work out pretty well. All right, so the last thing that we've got here before we uh, call this one a deal is I want to add in some hoses running across the top here. Um, so what I'm going to do is go over to the top view here and I'm going to make another just empty mesh layer. But before I continue here, let's actually just do a little housekeeping and I'm going to put all these into a folder. So let's just select all of my uh, my, my panels and my uh, little pieces that were on the wall. Right click and I'm going to choose parent to group locator. And then I can just call this detail meshes. That way I don't have to worry about where those are can move them up here also. And let's go ahead and make a new mesh layer. Then this is going to hold my curve and then I'm going to have another mesh layer that will hold uh, my actual uh, data for the procedural modeling. So I'm just going to create a single curve and from that single curve I'm going to create uh, a whole bunch of different hoses and pipes and conduits. So let's go ahead here and I'm going to go up to geometry and open up my curve palette. And I'm going to use a B spline. So the B spline is just going to allow you to set points, and each point is going to have a certain weight along the line. So it's a pretty simple, easy to control uh, version here. Let's go to the top view, and I just want to make sure that I'm keeping this kind of down the center here. So I'm not going to go super crazy with a lot of contours or anything like that, maybe a little bit here and there, uh, but I'm mostly just going to kind of keep these moving along here. And if this isn't exactly right, the cool thing is, is I'll be able to make adjustments as I move along. Um, all right, and so now let's go ahead and again minimize that. And there's my, uh, my view right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of grab a little bit randomly uh, some of these individual vertices um, along this curve and just pull them up and down a bit so that I get a little bit more um, you know a little bit more interest in this curve so it doesn't look totally uh, totally flat uh, and then I also am going to need to move the whole thing up so let's just take this whole thing and move it up here into this space and I'll just kind of center it up as well all right, so now that I've got that, I need to go ahead and uh, create a, a mesh here. So let's put another mesh layer, and I'll call this pipes, or actually these are going to be hoses, so let's call it hoses. All right, and with this mesh layer here, I want to call this curve, just so I know that's where I've got my curve. And in this empty hose mesh layer, now I can hop over to this um, to this mesh ops tag. And, uh, and the mesh ops are going to allow you to create procedural models uh, based on a pretty wide variety of things. And what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to create just a cylinder, and I'm going to extrude the cylinder along this uh, this curve. But then I'm going to go in and add some extra details and things to it. And then I'm going to um, save that out into its own layer as an individual hose. And I'll move that aside and create another one, move that aside, create another one. And I can, this way, uh, really easily fill out this space up at the top with some nice uh, details. So now I'm going to choose Add Operator. And the first thing that this will do is it will bring up a list of operators that I can uh, do. And this is going to be anything that I can create geometrically or any um, things that I can do to my geometry once I've created it. So just to do a quick walk through the process, I'm going to create a cylinder, which is actually just going to be a something like a, a circle. I'm going to extrude it along the, the length of the curve, and then I'm going to select some of the pieces along the curve and uh, bevel them to give it a little bit of depth, and then I'm going to thicken it and go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and double click on cylinder, and when I do that, you see I've got a cylinder in here. Now, I don't any, want any Y height, so I'm going to set that to zero. Uh, I'm going to set my segments to just one, and my sides, I'm going to subdivide these at the very end, so I'm going to set my size to something very fairly low, like um, let's go with... Let's go with eight sides. Uh, that way, if I don't want to subdivide them, I'll have a nice um, octagon. Um, and I think that ought to do it. All right? And just to keep everything a little cleaner, I'm going to pull this down out of the way. Uh, and the next thing I can do is add in another mesh operator uh, for the curve. So let's go ahead and click on Add Operator. And I'm going to type in Curve here. And you'll see that I have a curve extrude option here. I could also have typed in extrude if I knew which one I wanted, but that's okay. Uh, and now I can click and choose the path that I want to extrude along. And I've got to go down here and find my curve layer. 
and click OK. And now you see I've actually got my uh, my tube running down here, but there's a problem. It's way too big, right? Now, if you'd created this uh, in just a normal method, you'd have to go back and start over. The nice thing here is I can go back to my uh, cylinder layer and I can change the size here. So let's make this maybe 0.2 by 0.2, and that can be kind of our big main conduit. I think that that'll be a good, except maybe a little smaller, maybe 0 0.15, 0 0.15. All right. And now I can go back to my curve extrude and I can continue uh, to kind of refine uh, the way that this is working. Okay, so right now if I look at this, you see that I can open up any of these individual ones and I have other things going on inside of here. So um, I've got the tool pipe, which is going to be my path generator and then my segment generator, and that's what's actually going to give me uh, my extruded shape. So right now, I've only got 24 steps along the whole length, and that's not enough. So what I've got to do is just drag this up, and as I do that, you'll see that we get a more and more dense mesh. Now, I don't need to go really far here because I'm going to subdivide this, like I said, at the end. I think that works. Um, and now if you look here at my curve extrude overall, I've got a cap on the end and a cap on the start. I don't want those. I just want a tube. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire thing and thicken it. So again, add a mesh operator. Uh, let's type in thicken, double click. And now this is going to work just like uh, it would inside of a regular modeling viewport where all I have to do is click and drag on the handles. And you can see I'm getting my thicken. Okay, and now I'm going to go along here and I want to select every, I'm going to go every third. So I'm going to select one and then skip two and select another. And then I'm just going to hold down the up arrow until it gets pretty much all the way down. And I may need to get over here so I can see this. So let's just keep hitting the up arrow until it gets all the way down here. Oops, and I went too far it looks like. I think something like that will work. Oops, looks like I have a little bit of a whoops here at the end um, where I had moved my, my curve pieces around. And that's okay because I can either go and clean up the curve um, or I can just kind of continue on here. Let's, uh, let's continue on first and then I'll show you how you can actually uh, touch things up after the fact. So now I'm going to go backwards and select the same thing with adjacent uh, polygons. And again, just up arrow until it gets all the way down here. And now that I have adjacent polygons selected, I can press L to get a loop. And let's go ahead and add another operation here. So add operator. And this one, I'm just going to add in a bevel. So let's do polygon bevel. And all I need to do with this is to go ahead and use the handles, just like with the regular polygon bevel. And, you know, there we go. So now we've got uh, we've got this pretty much ready to go. Now what I may want to do is go ahead and add in some extra bevel here to thicken this. So uh, what I'm going to do is select these same pieces again here. So select that one, select that one, and then move down to the end. And just up arrow until I get there. And then I'll do the same thing going back. that and then L to get the loop and then I'm going to add in another bevel. We'll do polygon bevel again and this time I'm just going to pull in the handles just a little bit that way when I subdivide this this will get a little bit of a, a rigid edge to it and I think that'll look pretty nice. All right so now I made this and you know great I could have done a lot of these things with uh, with normal modeling operations um, but the nice thing is I could go in and now I've added on this contour to it without having to go back and forth um, and now I realize that there's something wrong with my curve here so all I have to do to fix this is go to my curve layer you can see where I've got something funny going on here let's go to vertices here and this way I can just move around the individual uh, pieces here so let's go to element move and right now I'm going to hide my hoses because they're out of the way. And it looks like all I had going on here is this one kind of errant piece here is causing me some problems. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of cleanup here. And it's really just because I've got some overlap. So what I could also do here would be to select a vertex and delete it. And let's do the same thing here, select a vertex and delete it. And hey, one more time, select a vertex and delete it. And now let's take it and just move this one down so I don't have my overlap. 
There we go, and I think that works a lot better. And now that I've gone and made these changes, I can go ahead and bring my uh, my hose back, and you can see that it's still following the contour. Now I don't have those issues down at the uh, at the very end. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to do here before uh, before we call this one a deal is I want to duplicate this and create some alternate versions of this uh, without having to go through and model them all separately. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to freeze this one. So first I'm going to go ahead and save my uh, save my scene. Good idea to save things and save them in iterations. So I'm going to call this Corridor 3, click Save. And now I'm going to take this one, right click, and I want to choose freeze mesh operations and I want to duplicate and freeze because I want to create more of this. So let's go ahead and duplicate and freeze. It'll take just a second uh, to actually create the uh, the mesh out of this and then I can sub D that mesh and move on and create some other ones. And there we go. That one took a couple of seconds this time. Now, something important to note is depending on the complexity of your actual um, procedural mesh, it might take a few seconds for it to create the uh, the standard mesh based off of that. Um, so if it takes a few seconds, it pauses. Uh, don't worry. It, I've had it uh, take even a, up to a couple of minutes with something really complex. Uh, but now that that's done, uh, you can see that I have a, uh, a hidden mesh that has my hoses in it, and that's still the procedural mesh, and then down here I have a frozen version that is uh, labeled hoses 2, and that is just going to be a standard mesh that now I can take, and in this case I'm going to turn this one into subdivision surfaces so that I can get a nice smooth appearance, so with it selected I'm going to go ahead and press shift tab, and there you go. So I think I have a little bit of uh, a loose edge around here at the beginning. And it looks like there's actually something a little funny with uh, with the bevel right there. But overall, I'd say this works uh, pretty well. So uh, just to make it a little bit tighter here, I'm going to run a couple of loop slices. There we go. I'll probably never even see that front edge. That's just going to be something that's going to be uh, hanging off outside of the camera range. So that's OK. Um, all right, so now in order to continue this, all I have to do is go ahead and turn on the hose uh, mesh again, the procedural one. And I have a couple of options, ways that I can work with this. I can, um, you know, for example here, let's see, I could go in to my cylinder and let's make the cylinder a little bit smaller this time. So let's put this at 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and see now I've got a smaller one. And I could go and turn some things off. So let's say if I take the bevels off, uh, now we're just going to be left with a regular tube. And then what I could do is go over to the hose itself. And let's look at this in the front view here to start. And I'm just going to take this and slide it over. You can see that it slides the entire procedural mesh along with it. So let's slide it over, maybe down a little bit. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could also go in and uh, make some uh, some other changes to it. So let's see if I go and let's go into vertices. And let's just grab a few vertices along here. That maybe I'll move these down a little bit. Uh, maybe let's rotate those ones a little bit. Just change the pitch overall of the entire thing. And I could do as much movement and change to this as I want. Uh, and then it's going to just adapt um, my procedural mesh to follow it. So that's one of the big benefits of working with the procedural mesh on something like this is that, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the actual path until you're all done. You can go ahead and clean it up. So uh, in this case, I'm going to make one more change to this. I'm going to thicken it a bit less. Uh, so let's just change this amount. And I'm going to call that one pretty good. And so let's go ahead and again, I'm going to right click on this and choose freeze mesh operations and duplicate and freeze and again that will take a couple of seconds to create the duplicated mesh and once i have that i'll be ready to move on and make as many of these copies as i want to um, in order to get the the right look that i'm going for in this case all right, so after making a couple of additional conduits to place along the top and leaving it in the preview render to cook for a little while, we've got a render of our corridor that's uh, giving us a good suitable preview. So that's that's about it as far as we're going to go on this tutorial. Uh, but just some other things that you might consider as you uh, keep moving on in something like this is, you know, right now I have everything fairly uniform where um, I've got the same pillars going down the left and the right sides, you know, on each side. I've got the same details. Um, the only place where I have much variation is on the floor panels and then on the conduit 
what's running across the top. But you know, keep in mind that you can very easily swap out individual pillars um, on either side. You could make changes and adjustments and additional versions of the pillars that you could swap in and out. Um, you may want to do the same kind of thing for the walls. Maybe on one of the walls you have uh, a large computer screen, or on another one you have a an opening to go into another corridor off to one side or the other. And really, this is where this becomes a very powerful system because you can so quickly iterate and create different versions of your scene. And this will allow you to not only get to the scene that you're working on more quickly, but it will also allow you to create different scenes for uh, for different environments all within the same system. So you can very easily iterate your way to a completely different project. And I've actually done that using this uh, very similar system. Um, so I, I'd invite you to continue experimenting, continue working along with the, uh, with the things that we've covered in this video so that you can create your own uh, sci-fi or other kind of scenes here inside of Modo.